Hey everybody, this is Mr. Kevin from Humble Craftworks here in beautiful Humble County, California. And today I'd like to talk to you about how to make boards flat. Ooh. Yeah, we got lots of boards to do. These are all doors. Doors. Being that it's all mahogany, it's uh, none too straight. So I have the privilege of making these boards all flat. So I'd like to go over a few little techniques that I do to make boards flat. Uh, how I make them easier to manage and uh, easier to mill out. Yeah. Sorry for the light. Uh, I, this was a spur of the moment thing and I figured I'm doing a bunch of flattening of boards um, and I might as well just uh, film it while I'm here. So um, let's get on with it. So flattening of boards. buy it make sure it's flat <laughs> that's the easiest thing you can do ah it's nice and flat perfect number two make sure that it's thicker than you need and wider than you need number three is cross cut your pieces larger than your final length to make them easier to handle all right and the fourth thing you need to do to make boards flat is to face joint them and if you don't know what face joining is, it's when you lay the board, instead of laying it on the edge of the joiner like this, upright on its edge, you lay it on its face or its back, and you face join it. A couple things you wanna watch for when face joining is the grain, the direction of the grain. If your cutter head's here, you want the grain to be going this way, this direction, kind of down. You don't want the grain direction to be going like my fingers are going this way. If your grain's pointing that way, it's a bad thing. The grain is like my fingers going this way and your cutter heads here. That's a good thing. Okay. This is crowned this way. I always put the crown side up. I take off the points first because it's easier to face joint with the points facing down. So when you're face joining and you put the crown side up, don't hog off, don't take off a lot of material. I take off a 30 second at a time. Uh, one reason is I don't want it to kick back on me, which I've never had happen, but I think it can. And two, it blows out. So the less material taking off at one time, uh, the more likely you are to have a cleaner cut, if that makes sense. So you might have to take two or three passes at something at a 30 second of, to get it flat, but it's way better in the long run because it won't be blown apart. So blow out. Let's see. Maybe this way. You see that blowout? It's all rough. That is completely blown out. And uh, just the way the grain is. This grain is wacky doodly. But when it went through the planer, see how the grain just shoots up like this? And then if it probably got planed this way, uh, with something that didn't have a spiral head cutter on it, we'll see the grain, how it goes this way? You know, all the grain. So when you run it through the joiner or the planer, you want the cutter head to be here and going that way. So the wood would go through this way. Okay. If you're running it through the, uh, the planer, the cutter head's on top. You want the cutter head to be up here and run it this way. Uh, okay. I don't know, it's probably hard to see. Uh, number five, so we've got grain direction. I should have wrote this stuff down. <laughs> God, look at that. Blue. Blue lights. Blech. LED lights. So I'm going to go and uh, face join all of these. They've all, they're all wide. They're all long. And what I do is I face joint them first. Make sure I get them flat. And some of these I already have done. Like, Like this one. Ooh. When you face join them, oh yeah, here we go, number five. After you're done face joining them, make sure you mark them so you know you face jointed that edge. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That way you know you're done. If, if I was to grab this and try to 
face join it, I'll be like, oh, I already did this one because I marked it. So mark your material once you're done face joining the side and your shirt's flat. Flat. No markings. No markings anywhere. It says what the door is, uh, where it goes, how wide it is, how long it's supposed to be. So make sure you mark it. But when you're face joining it, you'll probably face joint that off or plane it off. So make sure you write it on the edge. Write it on the edge so when you're doing all this work, because you're not going to join this again um, until after you face jointed it. So if you have it written on the face, make sure you rewrite it on the edge. All right, I don't know what number that was. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm going to record a few uh, how I face join things. And just keep in mind, when you see me flipping stuff over, what I'm looking for, I don't know if you can really see that or not, is the grain. So when I'm looking at it, First thing I'm going to do is crown up, regardless of what it is, I, I want the crown up. And then the other thing I'm going to look for when I go to join it is grain direction. This is the grain on this, it's going down like this, I don't know if you can see that right here, it's going down. So the cutter head, I'm going to put it this way, I'm going to run it this way through the joiner. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to film that a little bit and uh, you can listen to the music while I do it and I'll kind of make it fast and we'll go from there. All right. Well, hang on, here we go. How to make a board flat. All right. Okay, so I placed all the boards here and I placed them in the upright position so the crown faces up. It's hard to see. I mean, there's a slight crown to each one of these things. So I like the crown to be up. Um, very important that you wax your tools. <laughs> there's a video right here on waxing your tools. This is really starting to sound like an infomercial. Yeah. Your uh, tools are waxed, your fence is square. And everything is ready to go. Your dust collector is empty because you're gonna fill it up pretty quickly. And I just emptied it not too long ago, so hopefully it'll last. Make sure you wear your safety equipment. Look, I got a new mask the other day. These are kind of cool. Not the one I wanted, but uh, I just wanted to try them out. They seem to work pretty good. So, mask, safety glasses, headphones, because it's gonna get loud. Alrighty then. Magic button! Did you hear that? I missed the whole thing. So we got this little part, part right here. This whole thing got missed. So I'm going to mark the whole thing. Hit all back here. But this whole gizmo right here. Way up in the air, Archie, and I had to take, I had to bump at it like dang, and it didn't want to go any farther. Don't force it, just back it out uh, carefully. I mean, I don't think it can kick back. Uh, it might, you never know. I've done this for forever, so I'm kind of used to all this weirdness. So I'm going to do it again. Uh, this is very thick, so it's like seven eighths. The final dimension is three quarters of an inch thick. So if I get it within 13 sixteenths, I can take a couple passes at it. And it flattens out at 13 16 so I can run it through the planer at three quarter, two three quarter, and I'm good. Because these are too big when they're glued together to go through my planer, and I'm gonna have to belt sand them. <laughs> oh boy. Put my garbage back on here. I kind of like this mask. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. We'll see how it goes. Uh. I'm ready for surgery. Pinchy, pinchy. Oh, no. Okay, so uh, wait till this stops. Uh, you done yet? No, almost. You see all this right here? All that mahogany. So what happens is when you face joint, it makes a bunch of little flat curly cues. Unlike when you're joining the edge, it's you know because it's wider. And what happens, even with a with a good dust collector, is it tends to build up inside your joiner. So I uh, made a little air hose thing. So I can get down in my joiner and uh, get down there and blow it up. So what I'm going to do is you turn off your joiner. You turn off your joiner. Turn your dust collector back on. Here it goes. And we're going to blow out. This thing will reach all the way down to the bottom where the hole is. And we'll blow it out. Here we go.
So that's another little Kevinism tippinism for you. Uh, make yourself a long little nozzly thing. You can go to like any hardware store and buy all the parts. Screw it on the end of your air hose blaster and boop, you can clean out your machine better. Works for the table saw, works for the joiner, and works for the shaper if you have a shaper. So yeah, a little blower outer thing. All right, we're back. <laughs> All right, put your safety gear on. Here we go. Flattening boards. Magic button. Zoomy zoomy. You see me now? Okay, so this board, see how crooked it is? Look. Okay, that could be a bit of a problem. So hopefully, we'll have enough left over because remember we left it long that when we join this two or three times, this will go away. Because you want your panels to be completely flat. And hopefully, we'll get rid of that. All right, I'm going to back you out now. All right, so we can get away with three passes, maybe four. And hopefully, we'll get rid of this with uh, three passes. Four is pushing it, but uh, sorry for the noise. But we'll see. All right, here we go. Safety first. Whoa. Magic button. Uh, it's super light sawdust and uh, yeah it's just that's what it does but that came out flat <clears throat> let's see see okay. two passes worked out pretty good I was hoping we'd only get it in two passes because of all this because this is how it goes through the uh, big band saw at the mill and then they kind of rough plane it and that's why you get it hit and miss, which is good though, because you can, you can flatten it yourself and make it really flat. And what's going to happen now is I'm going to plane these and you don't need to watch me plane them. And then I'm going to glue them up. I'm just going to belt sand the seam. So I'm going to make the, uh, the doors, uh, a 30 second thicker than, uh, three quarters. Okay. So I'll, I'll show you what they look like, uh, when they get there. All right. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for hanging out with me and listening to my baloney. And hopefully uh, I helped you out somehow or you, you got to see how it's done. You've never seen it done. I don't know. Making a board flat, it's like I said, it's very important that you first pick out decent material the best you can. I know it's not always possible. Number one, manageable pieces. Cut them down a little longer than you need. Uh, make sure it's wider than you need by a little bit because you're gluing up panels. Like a quarter inch for each one will give you plenty for clamp marks and rejoining if it's not flat. Uh, make sure you label the edges of your wood because you're going to probably face join off the, uh, the labels. So just put them on the edge where you join it originally. And then uh, follow your grain directions so you don't get a bunch of tear out. And if I left anything out, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got to get back to work now. I got to blow this out and clean it up and uh, start planning all this stuff. So uh, this is Kevin from Humble Craftworks. Thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't. Hit the notification bell if you uh, feel like hitting the notification bell to hear more uh, baloney from me. Uh, the Butcher Block giveaway is still going on. Once I get to 100, I'm going to give it to somebody. Uh, and thanks again for everybody who's uh, helped me out. Uh, subscribe, like my videos, whatever. It helps. I really do appreciate it. More than you realize. And uh, thanks for watching Woodworking with Mr. Kevin. Because that's me. <laughs> and have an awesome day. See ya. You see that? Uh, uh, I'll do a close up of this, <laughs> but I'll say it again. Blue lights. Blech. I don't know what number that was. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Did I take two passes? All right, let me slow, slow it down. Face joining wood flat. How to make a board flat.